Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to TRG Podcast. This is podcast number three. Super excited about that. Uh, today we're going to be talking about children of divorce uh, and separation and how we have dealt with that. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I think that should be definitely a good one. Welcome to the TRG Podcast, everyone. This is the podcast where we discuss all matters of relationships that people are suffering from. You know, without further ado, I want to welcome back, surprise, surprise, Patrick, our COO. Welcome back, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, man. I'm really happy to be here and always. Yeah, it's... uh. You know, it's funny when you're bootstrapping and I'm sure you uh, have felt this as well, like in different industries and stuff like that. You're like the janitor, the cashier, (laughs) like the delivery person, like you are, you know, uh, the graphic designer, like you're literally everything. Uh, So super grateful for obviously you taking the time to sit down with me again. Um, I think listeners at home probably really appreciate the conversations that we've had. I think uh, the first two podcasts have been really successful on the subject matters that we've kind of broached and the viewpoints that we've broached as well. So super, you know, all joking aside, super grateful to have you here, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, It really is reciprocal. Uh, Honestly, I really, really value these opportunities. Uh, It gives me a chance to put out there uh, what's on my mind, you know, and just as, as you're saying, right, it's, it, it's only helping one people out of all the effort that we put in. I think it's worth it already. So, yeah, you yes. can count on me for further sessions, honestly. There's a lot of things that, I, that I'm sure we can talk about. So. <laughs> just write it into your job description. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably like, going to add it's that. It's just like, yeah, mandatory to uh, do like uh, free podcasts. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm, uh, you know, it's, uh, thank you very much, obviously, for, right. for stopping by, Patrick. Um, so the topic for today, obviously, children of divorce and separation and how to kind of cope with that. Um, for listeners at home that don't know, Patrick and I are, I mean, I think it's fair to say that we're both products of that, right? That's correct. Perfect. So I guess just a little backdrop, maybe about myself. Um, my parents split up in about 2010. So this was 11 years ago when I was 25, 26. It came as a complete shock to me, totally out of left field. Never expected that to happen. My sister and I both never expected that to happen. And it happens. Um, and <laughs> we're going to we're gonna dive into <laughs> to some of the trials and tribulations with that right. uh, for sure. But I, I'd like to hear from you, Patrick, about maybe your little synopsis or experience. For sure. And, you know, uh, for just for those at home uh, listening to the podcast, this is all new to me, by the way. I, I do not know what Jeff is going to say about his side of the story and or anything like that. And this is probably new to you in some sh- form or shape or form, right? So uh, to begin with my side of the story, I have to be honest with you. I, I really, really did have a happy childhood, right? Mm. Um, we were middle class. My father is a surgeon. So we were really well off on our own. He provided everything we needed. He gave me pretty much every single toy that I wanted. I even got a cell phone Mm -hmm. when people didn't really have cell phones back in the day. Like, uh, I don't know, I'm talking to you like uh, 15, 18 years ago, right? Yeah. So, uh, honestly, for me, well, what what was like the breaking point was when I was in high school, pretty Mm -hmm. much in the last year. Uh, of high school, I would love to tell you about like that story or, or how things changed and could transform me pretty much afterwards. So yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think that going off of that, um, 
I, I, were you surprised that this happened or did you have kind of inklings that it was leading to to that place that's a really good question man i mm. honestly remember like back when i was in uh, elementary school and then mm -hmm. secondary school and so on and so forth i always knew that people had problems in their lives and mm -hmm. but i had never experienced that firsthand and it's always so but so depressing to see somebody that is young and yeah. and is like hurting right mm -hmm. and sometimes even because of things that they didn't cause right you're so mm -hmm. you're you're so young and you usually make mistakes but no nowhere near to the point where your parents would break up or something like mm -hmm. that right so it usually comes from other other sides so uh, I honestly didn't see this this coming, um, but it just happened one day, right? And when it when it happened, which I'm going to tell you how it happened and, and everything, it really did break me. It mm -hmm. broke me to the point where nothing that I that that I was told by my friends uh, mattered, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and it really got me to the point in my life where I was depressed. <laughs> when I felt that I didn't have anybody who pretty much understood what I was going through. I started to rely on myself more than ever, but uh, that came afterwards. So yeah, that, that's pretty much like the, the the beginnings of it, yeah. The genesis of it, the genesis yeah. Of it, yeah. I, I think it's very interesting that, um, like, at least from my perspective and my experience, uh, people would always tell me like, oh, isn't it easier when you're uh, older? Because when you're younger, you know, you're so dependent on your family. You know, if you're like four or five, you just don't understand what's going on. And yeah, I can't really speak to that part of it because I wasn't young when it happened. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is that I did not see this coming at all. Like, honestly, it was completely out of left field. Same, I think, I think I can speak for my sister and say that that was the same thing with her. And we had this concept ingrained in us of a quote unquote nuclear family. Mm, okay. Got it, got Obviously, it, got it. <laughs> I'm sure maybe that was the same way for, for yes. you guys. Um, I know that, I don't know if this is the case, but uh, in Mexico, I believe that people are very religious, right? Yes, most of the population is, although as of recently, well, the more, more younger generations are deciding to not to not follow those, uh, those uh, well, thoughts, yeah. Right, and they're mainly Christian or Catholic? Mainly Catholic, yeah. Okay, it's mainly so. This is by no stretch of the imagination any kind of dig or anything like that against Catholicism, uh, or am I associating nuclear families specifically with Catholicism? Right. But this is kind of like within that, like I guess their philosophies in general and their teachings, right? Like nuclear family, and the traditional nuclear family would usually be, you know, husband. A wife, wife and white picket fence, two kids, a dog, you know, a car, That's whatever. Pretty much it. Yeah. yeah, right? Like that that would basically be the traditional sense. Yeah. Obviously, today's sense might be radically different from that. It could be a husband and husband, a wife and a wife, two transgender partners, you know, uh, whatever that might be, a single yeah. parent, for example. Um, but we're just going by the traditional sense of what a nuclear family was. So <laughs> That, that was obviously a long rant to, <laughs> to kind of cover my butt about those kind of things. But, um, you know, I think it's important that uh, listeners out there understand that some listeners might not have been born in the 80s like I was. Um, but moreover, I guess back to my point, my sister and I had this idea in our head, like, that's just what you did. Like, that's who you were, right? Like, you got married, you had two kids that's it, right? Like you grew old together, your kids kind of grew up, they moved out of the house and you retired. And so when that foundation was shook or shattered, I didn't really know what to make of it, to, to be completely honest with you. Um, and I, I think my sister probably would um, speak the same way. And I think even today, um, it's it's kind of warped some of our viewpoints of mm -hmm. what marriage really is, really is like right. in the traditional sense of the word, sure. right? Yeah. 
and how credible it is and all these kind of things. Um, yeah. So I, I guess that was just a long boat. Way no, of that's, telling that's you great. Opinion. You know, I, I wanted to tell you that, well, I have a sister, right? She's younger mm -hmm. than me, uh, mm -hmm. pretty much a little bit over nine years uh, younger than me. And uh, up until today, she she's really, really stuck with this idea of I'm not going to marry. I'm mm -hmm. never going to marry. And I'm like, congratulations, you're doing that great thing. I don't think you are missing anything, right? You are not missing anything. You're guys. smarter than all of us. As a matter of fact, you're pre pretty much yeah. well off better alone yeah. than than making that mistake. But, but at the same time, you know, it's not always a mistake. I know people that are yeah. super, but super happy being yeah. with somebody else and having a partner for the rest of their lives. And I'm mm -hmm. happy for them, genuinely. But obviously, this is something that it's it's not for everyone. And no. I consider that's not for me as well. At least not not today. Maybe not within the near future. Mm -hmm. The reason behind that is because I already noticed that there's patterns that you carry over to, mm -hmm. to your personal relationships and it's sad right because you know it's like this story of the um alcoholic father i mm -hmm. my father my, my father is not an alcoholic by the way mm -hmm. um, he never drank or anything uh but you know you, you hear this story about the alcoholic father who always hates the, the mom yeah and then pretty much just is falling asleep out of drunken drunkness all the time and and you pretty much start despising people like that and you you never want to to be with a man if you're a girl or whatever a man as well you don't want a man in your life like that that is like that that shapes mm -hmm. you to the point where you start despising again these kind of uh, behaviors and people right mm -hmm. so to make my point is that when when i have being a partner with somebody for a long time I, I noticed that i was repeating some of the things that that i knew hurt me or mm -hmm. hurt my family mm -hmm. when i was math right mm -hmm. so i would project those thoughts or those actions over to my rela relationship and i would start hurting them, them my partner mm -hmm. even though i really didn't want to mm -hmm. um, i felt like crap afterwards but mm -hmm it happened so i know that i'm not yet ready in the sense of my uh, emotional intelligence and my maturity in yeah. order to undertake such a such a, a, a feat right uh and then again there's people who fight every day and then they, they just go back to normal the, the next day the next morning and they are mm -hmm. okay but i'm not okay with that you know i believe that if you're gonna be with someone you really have to uh, dedicate yourself and put your heart and soul into it so everything is working perfectly or may maybe not perfectly but smoothly on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis right that's a really mature way to look at things uh for sure I, I i have to admit it saddened me a little bit when you told me that uh you had a sister that didn't believe in marriage i know it's it's her choice yeah but uh you can't help but i don't know if you feel this way but you can't help but feel like um she's almost like a byproduct of where society uh, yeah. is now yeah. if that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah that makes total sense um and we we've, we've kind of got ourselves in this <laughs> position yeah um i know that the reason why i picked this topic for kind of today's discussion uh, and i was kind of alluding to this before we started recording was that you know 50 something percent of marriages end in in divorce right yeah, at least it, in the u.s and i guess maybe in north america in, in general and that i think uh, that is within the first couple of years the first one or two years yeah. that, that that actually happens yeah it could be even be the world i don't know what those statistics look like or if they're even recorded but i know that it's pretty widely spread and i think it's might even be over 50 percent now like that was it was like 50 percent, honestly like when I was in my 20s, you know? Uh -huh. uh, so <laughs> usually those numbers don't correct themselves and go down, <laughs> they go up. Um, nonetheless, you have uh, a lot of people, like divorce is very prevalent now. Yeah. I see that happen all the time. But I, I mean, uh, full disclaimer, I, I do want to highlight, I do know a bunch of friends that are married and yeah, they have 
problems just like um, everyone else, but uh, they're they're super happy, right? Like yeah. they're they're super happy with where they're at and and uh, you know the partner that they picked and they go through struggles just like everyone else. But I think there's a lot of beautiful things about marriage as well. Like I, I just I don't want this to be a super negative like <laughs> we're preaching to you you know like yeah. you're you shouldn't get you know married you have to be single all, all your life yeah oh, not exactly. really and, and you know i i actually am on the same boat uh, about that and i believe that when it comes um i'm probably going to marry you know mm -hmm. uh well honestly i had already been with someone for a long period of time mm -hmm. unfortunately it didn't work Mm -hmm. But I have experienced firsthand like what it is to live with someone, uh, to share your life with them and pretty much do everything together, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I know it really, really does make you happy, like genuinely happy and uh, you achieve a, you get to achieve a lot of great things when you are with mm -hmm. someone because it is not just you, you know, it's a shared pain, but at the same time, it's a shared uh, happiness, and happiness yeah yeah an experience and stuff like that yeah. and that's not something that you can put out a price on for sure. yeah <laughs> yeah but you know also part of the, like the cultural changes that are going around or these cultural dynamics that happen around the world mm -hmm. i have friends in india i have friends in uh in, in japan uh, in the u.s in canada uh and and it so it just so happens and it's curious to see that the younger generations, including mine, I mean, I'm from 1993, we pretty much just marry because we believe that's the way it has to be, right? Like in order to be with someone, you have to marry and then boom, you, you find out like what, six months, uh, one year after afterwards that that's not the right person for you or that you were not really meant to be together. I remember back when I was uh, in high school, pretty much last year, uh, there was this teacher, uh, she was a um, physician, that, that's a word mm -hmm. that I wanted to say. I was uh, pretty much on the way to become a, um, a plastic surgeon, so I was taking oh, wow. classes that, that were related to that. I remember one day she just uh, got in the, into, the, in the, into the classroom, she was like fuming out of uh, yeah. angriness and we thought it was because of, of us but no i mean we didn't do anything we hadn't mm -hmm. done anything she put her books on the on the on the desk she took a deep breath and like they like this right just <laughs> to like calm herself and then she started venting to us and she said something that i'm never going to forget and she, she said this if you marry someone make sure that you love and she said, and I repeat, that you love the way that he smells, the way that his mouth smells, <laughs> the way that, that his farts smell. Yeah. And that you're okay with it. And that you're okay with everything and every single thing that he does and yeah. every single behavior and bad habit that he has, make sure that you love that. Yeah. If you do not love something about him, trust me, you're going to divorce. And she broke pretty much. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Her, her voice broke and she started crying. Oh, wow. And yeah, she was such a beautiful woman with all the, the, the sense of the word mm -hmm. because she was she was lovely when she was teaching us. Mm -hmm. And we got some of us got to, to, to so close to her that we actually stood up and we went there to, to hug her. And then she pretty much told us that she was she was just coming from the jury yard. I don't know how you said, right? Like, yeah, um, uh, they, like the court. Yeah, yeah the like court, court or whatever. Yeah. yeah, to finalize things. Yeah, I guess. so yeah. she had just uh, divor divorced, and she was still there uh, trying to teach us, right? Yeah, uh, I think she gave us a really really big lesson that day. A lot of people were. I remember some of the people that were just there because they needed the credits. Uh, they were laughing at her and I pretty much got mad. I told them, like, just shut the... Yeah, that's <laughs> incredibly <laughs> insensitive yeah. Uh, by yeah. obviously your classmates, but I can see people being very immature about yeah. something like that, yeah. And, I, and just as I was telling you, like, well, my parents' uh, breakup happened 
around that same same time i was yeah. going through that and when she told that uh to, to the class um uh, i actually felt so identified that i reached out to her and i told her my story and she was like patrick done uh, done trip pretty much right don't yeah trip, patrick uh you got this you are who whoever you are because of the things that you do not because of the right. things that your parents do uh, and you know uh honestly up until today I, I feel like i should reach out reach out to her again and see where she's at but i remember that so so dearly it mm -hmm. was such a big lesson for me and i honestly wouldn't have navigated through through everything as well as i considered that i did mm -hmm. despite making huge mistakes honestly i'm not saying that everything was went, went well mm. if i didn't have that that advice back then Nice. Well, I mean, look, I, I think that probably that advice happened to you at the right time in the right place. Yeah, it came, uh, it came just like magic, yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of destiny, I guess, right, that you need <laughs> to hear those words. Um, I think it's interesting what she said, you know, like, you have to love him for the good and the bad. Um, I think, at the very least, you have to be able to be willing to tolerate someone yeah. through the bad and compromise um and <laughs> you have to be willing to compromise for yourself as well right for certain things not all of your values but there's a push and pull with relationships and we can go down into that rabbit hole in, in another podcast <laughs> yeah, session but for sure. you know pushing and pulling in relationships i think is obviously you know, super vital to, to keeping a relationship alive, right? Um, and I think a lot of couples don't do that sometimes. They just say, you know, hmm, like, this is me. I'm going to be stubborn as F and basically, yeah, and I don't give you know, that's it. Like, if yeah. you accept me, yeah, you accept me if, if, if that's cool. And if you don't, then get out of my effing way kind of thing. Right? <laughs> that's really no way to, I mean, if you think about that concept for a second, Patrick, is that any way for you to have a relationship even just with a friend, Honestly, right? Not. Or a boss or like a peer or any business relationship? Of course not. No, nothing. I, I, I don't believe that anything works in this world if you are stubborn as hell if you are not willing to give something up because you are so naive yeah you think that everything has to go the way you want it to mm -hmm. even if you're rich that's not true money doesn't move the world mm -hmm. people move the world and the way that you behave and you navigate through through things really does make a difference not how much money you have not how much friends you have or friends like some some mm -hmm. people think that they have people that are and sorry yeah. for the bad word never truly get to enjoy what a real friend is in my opinion uh, and and you know i believe that uh, if you are jumping into a relationship it's a leap of faith you really really have to be in the mindset that okay i'm i'm willing to give off a lot of things I don't know yeah. those things yet, probably, but if you are already like, let's say like one year, two years into a relationship and you're thinking about doing the next uh, step and uh, living together with that person or marrying that person, mm -hmm. you really have to be aware that there's a lot of things that you will have to change on yourself. And there's a lot of things that uh, your counterpart is probably not going to want to change you know yeah for sure same time, <laughs> it's a battle and it's a struggle um and i say it this way because i have seen it i have had multiple partners and i am thankful for every single one of them and to have every single one of them because of the things that i learned and i know that we have grown to the point where we are uh knowledgeable enough or experienced enough to say enough to say Okay, I'm probably not ready for for a relationship, right? Or for marriage, more like, more like for marriage. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it really does happen to me, and this is a pattern that I, that I am working on. Mm -hmm. I mean, my last relationship was uh, two years ago already, mm -hmm. but it, but I'm staying single because I really, really want to to do things right next time. Mm -hmm. It's like I, it's not like I, I want to find the right one because I'm sure that I found five right ones already. But I was, I was hurting them because I was stubborn and I always wanted to be right. 
you know i think that's what breaks up relationships like always wanted to be right wanting to be right and always wanting to to have the last word and not being able to understand that uh, if you really love someone you're willing to do anything for them right yeah and i think um you know sacrifice is one of those things i also think that people go through the gauntlet of relationships to it's almost like relationship university uh, <laughs> yeah and like you know relationship masters and PhD, <laughs> and the right? masters like, and then the phd yeah, and yeah. so sometimes you have to flunk out of school right like you have to like get through like a divorce to yeah. find out like hey this is what i need this is what i want this is what i need to change in myself in order to be like a better partner for that person i think the one advice that i could probably give to listeners at least this is just from my you know experience or whatever Move in with your partner before you guys decide to take that next step to marriage. Yeah. Um, I I know in some cultures that's not accepted. Uh, like, yeah. you know, definitely in, in, you know, Chinese culture, that's usually kind of frowned upon. Although, you know, right. people that are my generation and younger are They're obviously living it. together, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, my mom's generation, it's like super taboo, obviously, for that to happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, the, the point is obviously to go into cohabitation with someone so that you can <laughs> see the good but also the bad, no, the right? bad yeah like the person that is i don't know drinking milk out of the milk carton or leaving the toilet seat <laughs> up, or not taking the uh wet clothes out of the washer into the dryer so all the clothes are soggy and smelly and they have to wash it again you know like there's just so many things there that you guys don't Real, like i don't think a lot of listeners realize they do or they're gonna be <laughs> bugged by until until they live together they actually yeah until they actually experience that and then either share that with someone or that person shares something like that bad yeah. part about them you know with that person right yeah and, and and you know the, this is a great point uh because you usually don't go by your relationships or um yeah your relationships like Oh hey, by the way, I wake up every day and I don't wash my my mouth or my teeth, yeah. right? Or yeah. I love to pee on the on the sink uh, outside of the sink. <laughs> and I leave a mess every time that I go to the bathroom. You mm -hmm. never say those things because it usually is something that you find out. Uh, I mean, you don't find out until you move in together. Yeah. Right. So it's great, uh, and at the same time, it, it can be. Uh, your demise if you ask those things before <laughs> moving together <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it can come off as are, are you trying to judge me or something yeah. but not really you know it you, you know that you might be asking this because you really want to be sure right yeah but honestly uh it's better sooner than later like getting to notice those things because you start to, to, to like really prepare your mind and, and get into this mindset that things are going to be like this and you will be fine with it. You don't, I guess a mistake that a lot of people make and I'm really against this um, is, as, is that a lot of people try to change their partners, right? They mm -hmm. try to make everything perfect just the way that they, they, they think they about see it. it yeah. Or they see it, right? And it's more often than not, in my opinion, this is just a projection of everything that you grew, grew up with, right? Yeah, or everything you're in, insecure about, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's it, that's a really good point. Um, yeah. If, if you're marrying... <laughs> Like if you're marrying someone that is your perfect mold of a person or you're trying to mm -hmm. mold them into that perfect person, you're not marrying me. Not marrying you're marrying like a version of me that you want, that you me, want to me to be, be. right? Yeah. Like, and that's, that's a huge distinction that I yeah. think that a lot of listeners need to kind of understand. Um, that's a very dangerous thing. To, yeah, for sure. Like yeah. treating people as vessels that you mm -hmm. put things up inside of mm -hmm. and then you say okay this is exactly what i wanted that's a really really unhealthy uh, behavior because at the end of the day more often than not i believe uh, it doesn't happen yeah i know people that and, and i even ask them hey how are you able to, to 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 be happy knowing that uh what the things that you are giving off are not making you 
uh, like feel a hundred percent in agreement with, with with your partner, right? And they were like, well, the people that I, that I've asked, they pretty much tell me like, well, you have to make a bad decision to give off mm-hmm. everything, to give off trying to be right all the time. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm not ready yet for for that to, to make that leap, right? Mm-hmm. So. I guess that, that that is all. That's what it's all about. You know, there's always a, an internal dynamism in the, in, the, in your relationship that will shape everything that you do, from where you work, all the way to well, how you sleep. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it, it really shapes everything. And if if you're willing to give off a lot of things for that. And so be it. A lot of people are happy just the way they are, even if they are fighting every single day. It becomes mm-hmm. part of their lives. Like if, if I don't fight with her or with him, I don't feel fulfilled. Right. Because it's like there's nothing to do, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> if you're happy like Can't that, people I, just be happy. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> like, you just satisfied. be happy for the sake of being happy. Uh, and maybe think about doing something else with your time, right? And yeah. it's like, no, and you know, it, this really ties down to sex. Mm. I, I've been told this and I have experienced it as well, that sex feels better after you you, you were fighting for some reason, reason or, or another, like you liberate more and a lot of heightened emotions. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? We'll, we'll, we will probably have to research a little bit into that and then share with our viewers <laughs> what happens. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Um, I honestly, I think that one of the things that um, is important to point out to people is I don't believe that people go into marriage with the anticipation that they're going to get divorced. Yes, there are some gold diggers, I'm sure, <laughs> that they can't wait to, you know, <laughs> marry some 80-something-year-old for the, <laughs> the next day and inherit his fortune. Or yeah, fortune, for sure. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that happens. But I think for the most part, people go into marriage because they want to try to make it work and they really like the person or love the person that's across from them. Right. Um, does... Does that mean that that's a good reason to get married? No, not necessarily. Not really. But I, I do believe that people are genuinely like, I guess with the strong belief that hopefully marriage will work out. Mm, and it just right. doesn't work out sometimes, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think to add up to your point, I believe that, that a lot of people are just waiting for things to, to, to happen right yeah. like maybe next day maybe tomorrow everything will be fine but honestly just as i was telling you on episode one uh you really need to put your grain of uh of sand or your your, your effort into mm-hmm. making things happen mm-hmm. if, if you're waiting for something to happen it's never going to happen or it's, it's it is probably not going to happen the way you want it to Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, you didn't do anything for that. You didn't put the effort. You, you didn't put the time. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's the sweat and the, 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 the tears for that mm-hmm. to happen. And I know a lot of people that have gone in, out of uh, really, really wonky situations with their, with their partners. They have even cheated on, uh, cheated on, on themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but afterwards, they, they are able to, to, to heal those wounds and to forgive. And I commend them for that because I would probably not be able to to, to, to go by something like that. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, uh, one of my relationships, not the latest one, but one of them ended because I was cheated on. I knew it. I knew it for a couple of months. But um, I, again, that was my mistake. It was, I was waiting yeah. for that person to tell me. Um, but then when, when I understood that it, it was not going to happen and instead she was just going to keep doing that, I decided to, to confront her, right? And, and, you know, this was a projection of many of the things that happened to when my parents uh, separated, even though I was just repeating a pattern again, mm-hmm. because I learned that from, from my parents. But then again, I was like, okay, okay, it's pretty much, I understand what's going to happen. I'm not going to marry this person. I'm not going to be with her in my entire life, even though I want to, even though I want to forgive her. But I just couldn't bear with that because I felt betrayed. Really, yeah, you really can bring deep. yourself to that. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I think it's actually quite interesting that you knew or suspected for months, but you just didn't know how to bring it up or maybe you yeah. just didn't want to broach the, the subject or yeah. yeah whatever that might be and i think that's a very fascinating thing as well because it's almost like living in a facade right you want to just yeah. keep the the thing going for as long as you can and kind of turn a blind cheek to like yeah. the house that's burning over here kind yeah. of thing right and and i guess the point that i'm trying to make jeffrey is that even if we are putting our heart and soul into a relationship, it will never work if the other person is not doing the same. Like, seriously. Absolutely. I, I think that some people try to will it to, yeah. uh, to in, in, into existence. And there's only that can only get you so far, right? Yeah. Uh, eventually, exactly. the other person, if they're just not into it, they're just going to quit, right? Like, Or they are going like, to start cheating on you. I see yeah, just or so yeah, they're gonna find an alternative somewhere else. Not that I condone that, but yeah. uh, you know that that's obviously can happen. That's one scenario that can happen, and that's obviously a very uh, thing. But it, exactly. it certainly does happen. So I, can, I guess for <laughs> listeners out there, you know, if you do find a partner that you're kind of unsure about, make sure that like that they have two feet in, right? Just like you have two feet in. Uh, you can you can probably get a pretty good spidey sense if someone has one foot out and that's not I hope some listeners don't take this too to heart because some of you out there might be super neurotic <laughs> like, you know like because right. of your previous scars from other relationships you might bring that baggage into your current relationship and be like where are you, <laughs> you know, who are you eating with <laughs> who are you out with right. I'm not saying that Patrick's not saying that but I think that's an important part to understand that like, hey, is this person really there for me at the end of the day? You know, when I really need them, like, are they solid? You know, are they a rock in my yeah. life? And if there's questions there, I do think that you have to bring them up. It's better to bring them up sooner than later. You don't want to be, you know, uh, marriage in with two kids. And then <laughs> all of a sudden it's just like, yeah, I... I don't love you, you know, I've never loved yeah, you. Kind of yeah, by the way, I just noticed that I don't really love you and yeah. I don't really want to be with you. So bye for now, right? Exactly, I exactly. Just pack my things, bye for now. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, uh, if I could tell you anything, like genuinely that, that I, have, I have experienced is that, well, if they really are committed to the to their relationship, just uh, as you're saying, there's nothing that can stop you. Yes, there will be hardships. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes through hardships. And I told, as I told you, money doesn't buy happiness. So I have known people don't have that much money, right? Yeah. They go buy with whatever little they can make. But at the, at the end of the day, they, those are the people that are most thankful for what they have in terms of family and in yeah. terms of their relationships. And they blast you away when, when they tell you, hey, this is my life and they'll they tell you about the things that they do together and you're like mm -hmm. i don't have this and, and you i'm jealous right like uh, you, yeah. you can genuinely say oh oh my god i wish that i would have that and just like that th these are people that pretty much resonate with with each other and they just move mountains uh mountains like with this with these thoughts it's like they've unlocked the secret of life. Exactly. And I see you smiling. <laughs> yeah. I know this, that you're yeah. probably thinking about something that happened in your life before then. Like, it really is magical, man. Again, if you are able to project all of your energy towards something and, and you have someone at your side that is also doing the same, it really yeah. does get you places, man. Seriously. For sure. I know we're going a little bit uh, on a on a different topic of a marriage right now and stuff like that, but it does tie in for sure. I think a lot of couples, uh, you know, we can have a whole other episode about this. Like, get married for quote unquote all the wrong reasons, right? Oh, um, oh, for sure. So many, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so many of the wrong reasons. Um, instead of really sitting back and trying to analyze and rationalize some things and saying to themselves like. Okay, what are the real reasons that we're that we're together? Yeah, that we're together, right? What are the real reasons that we want to get married? Like, <laughs> do you actually feel like you want to get married, or are we just kind of 
you know, expecting a child or like what what exactly is going on here? And, and are those enough reasons to take us over the finish line, right? Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Because uh, I think that's that's really important for people to go into. And again, that, that obviously could be an entire episode. I, I kind of wanted to circle back to obviously some of the stuff of our own experiences and how we dealt with kind of our own parents' divorce oh, right. and everything yeah. like that. Because we talked a lot about relationships and how they kind of evolve and, and those kind of things. I think for myself, um, it was it was a little bit conflicting for me because I was super close to my mom and my mom basically pulled the plug on my father. I don't know. And, and for, you know, valid reasons and everything like that that I don't quite want to go into. And I was, I'm still super close to my mom till, till this day, right? Like, you know, she's one of the closest people to me. I talk to her literally every single day. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. I can honestly say that there was a couple of years there where the relationship was a little bit fractured. Like? It was definitely a little bit fractured. I was definitely a little bit disappointed, right or wrong. And that was really tough. You know, I went through a very, very dark you know, we were talking about darkness and kind of like our, our first, you know, episode or first podcast. Right. You know, I, I lived through some of those things during that period in my life. Right. So, you know, for listeners out there, you're going to go through a gambit of emotions, whether you are young or whether you are were like, you know, a young adult <laughs> when that happened to me. Right. Understand that that's OK and that's normal. Also understand that it's not your fault yeah and you cannot no. change that outcome. no and you can't change that you can't change that outcome it's um no matter how much you want to try to mend the fences and like you know some people will put the guilt and the onus on them and be like hey if i was a better child like my parents wouldn't split up and stuff like that i can almost <laughs> promise you that it has very little to do with you if anything yeah. You know, I remember this episode uh, throughout the separation. Yeah. When, um, well, I was looking at, at everything from from an outsider's view. I mm -hmm. honestly didn't know why my parents were were fighting. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, one day my mom told me like everything that happened. Uh, there was an affair and everything. It really is not mm -hmm. important why why, why they why yeah. they were fighting more than what was happening to the family in the sense mm -hmm. that. I was the one in the middle, like I am the second of three children. So mm -hmm. my parents were trying to put me in this position where they wanted my approval. They wanted me to say that one of them was right. The mistake was thinking that I could moderate their conversations. I would sit down with them at the table and say, okay, you're just talking to yourself, but you're not really talking. You're yelling and you're not getting anywhere. I want to sleep. I want to go to, to school uh, next day, which is something, by, by the way, that, that I think really, really got me through. Like I devoted myself to school. The point is that I, I tried to moderate things. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now you talk. You, you have a minute to talk. I'm going to time you, right? Mm -hmm. Make your point. And, and then, okay. You, you try to make your point. And, and you know, at the very beginning of, of, of that, uh, like the like the reply or, mm -hmm. or, the, or the point, my other parent would, would start like uh, uh, getting into, into the, the other's uh, speech, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not true. And like, blah, 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 right? They, they would start fighting again. And I was like, yeah, I pretty much cannot do anything about it. I cannot yeah. save this marriage. And that was so hard to me, you know, because I really, really dearly wanted to, 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 to save it, like to, to help them go over that. But I understood like, okay, that's something that you, you probably cannot get out of. Um, and that or more like you cannot get them out of, right? Um, um, I also remember like my friends telling me, hey, Patrick, don't worry about it. Like, um, just, just, just be yourself, man. Um, don't let it get into your head, man. Don't don't let it affect you, man. Like, oh my God, how, how is it? How, how is it not going not? to? Yeah, how can you not? <laughs> yeah. it, and it's, it's so so. It, yeah. it was so baffling to me. Like, how? Why are you even telling me this? Like, 
you would not like <laughs> two seconds in my life, right? Yeah, that's you, you, that's you, bad advice. <laughs> yeah, you would break up like so yeah. fast if you were in my, in my on my feet. Yeah, and uh, I'm thankful that I got away of a lot of a lot of people that were saying things like that because they pretty mm -hmm. much didn't. Uh, I mean, I know that they were saying this because they want they didn't want to see me hurting. But I understand that at the same at the same time that I was going to bring a lot of negativity into their lives as well. So I decided to pretty much stay a little bit back from, from them. I can, I can understand. Actually, that's a very good point. Um, did you ever rekindle some of those friendships? With oh those yeah, for sure. After? And I'm oh. thankful to say that for for example, my lawyer, uh, she was one of them. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, honestly. Uh, those that I can that I consider my real friends up until mm -hmm. this day, which is a really really short list, mm -hmm. just two people. Uh, they were through. I mean, I met them uh, on high school, and we mm -hmm. were we pretty much split ourselves apart when we went into into, into college. Every mm -hmm. one of them, uh, every one of us took a different path. But but you know what happened? Uh, even after those years, I'm telling you, this happened. Well well um uh, more than uh, 12 13 years ago uh we are still together right like we still talk to talk to each other we still even hang out together so i really really am grateful for that for that and um, even though covid has made things uh, hard and well my own personal situations have made it harder for us to continue like seeing each other uh they are still there interesting and I'm yeah it, them, yeah. you know you at that time maybe you tried to spare them from the toxicity of kind of like the situation and the negativity of the situation i think it's probably important that um you or listeners understand at home that uh, sometimes people just don't even know what to say right because yeah. they've never been through a situation like that so the only thing they can say is like Hey, don't let it affect you. <laughs> like, you know, you, you know, be happy, right? Like, yeah. at, at least, you know, you have a lot of things going on for you. And like, obviously that's maybe the last thing that you want to hear <laughs> yeah, at that time, sure. right? Um, yeah. and, and you're like, you don't understand. Like you, you've never gone through this. Like, how would yeah. you kind of understand? How would you understand? Yeah. I, I think it's in a very weird and warped way. It's kind of a... Uh, it is a it it's advice that comes from a place of love and care. Yeah, for sure. But it's just they don't necessarily like, know like, any better, right? Like they don't know how to approach the situation because it's so awkward. Like, you know, what do you? What what do you, what do you say, say to someone that is yeah. going through that? Yeah. So <laughs> I I don't hundred percent blame them for 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 telling you that advice. Um, I think that just kind of speaking from my own experience. I was honestly embarrassed and ashamed. Yeah, I can't say that for my sister, but I did not tell a soul for six months. And six months, literally, I lived with that, like just day and night, night and day, putting up a facade. My and then God. finally, I remember I sat down my best friend and we were at we were at White Spot, which is a chain of restaurants here in, in, um, in Vancouver. And uh, I told her, I was like, hey, there's something that I need to tell you. And she was like, honestly shocked. Like, what else wow. does she say in that circumstance? She had no idea that I was going through all this kind of stuff. Right. I feel I felt a huge sigh of relief, right? Because it's like, finally, I get to I share found. this with someone. And it's so interesting. I remember that year or the next year, I decided to kind of take a, a trip to uh, China, just kind of like a cleansing trip to like get you know, it just go somewhere, right? And 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 kind of just think about different things. I was more open to people that were complete strangers on my trip and more comfortable opening up to complete strangers on my trip than people back at home. Because there's no judgments. <laughs> there's no judgments whatsoever, yeah. right? Does that oh. make sense? Yeah. Um, I don't I don't quite know what it's like in Latin American culture. But in Chinese culture, it's very taboo for your family to get to divorced apart. and be divorced. Yeah. yeah, it just doesn't happen, man. Like you could have like <laughs> you could have like 
a husband being the shit out of you, right? Like, <laughs> in my grandma's age, right? Like, my grandma's era. And, like, just complete womanizer and everything. And it's like, nope, you stand by your husband. Like, no matter <laughs> yeah, what. Kind of thing, which is crazy it. when you think about it, right? Yeah. Um, I do yeah, like it's the... absolute lunacy, but... Yeah, I believe there was a lot more at stake back in the day. And, and you often like hear your your grandparents and even your parents saying like, I just stood with him or by his by his side mm -hmm. because of you, right? Like, hell no, you shouldn't have done that. You should have run, run away, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, but, but you know, that's also like one of the main driving reasons why a lot of the younger generations are not, are not staying together. Like at the first um, like uh, indicator or notion that they are going to be something like that, they just run away. And, and I think that's healthy, honestly. You don't have to stay with people just for the sake of it. Even if you have children already, there's laws that protect you because of that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you, 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 you can get uh, split custody or even full custody of your children if it really has to come to that point, which I don't really wish to anybody because there's also a lot of, a lot of things that go with that. But hopefully you're already mature enough or old enough to get to the point where you are able to say, okay, I know this is happening. I know I cannot do anything about it, but you know, if I could have given myself any advice back in the day, the thing that I would say to me is only you know what you're feeling and only you mm -hmm. will be able to bring you yourself back up mm -hmm. the level of happiness that you had before and maybe even surpass it, right? So mm -hmm. the point that I'm trying to make is that there's nothing, no amount of therapy, no, no amount of friends, no amount of talk that is get you out of that situation besides your parents breaking up and it's probably way better in the long run for them to break up than they stay staying together and destroying their lives it's very true because that toxicity will just brew and it will get infested in everyone else's life and i don't think that i even though i was a young adult i don't think i was mature enough at that time to really understand and conceptualize that you know when i look back all these years later i really say to myself it, it was probably for the best that that yeah, happened and, and uh it, we <laughs> this is selfish i think as children we do this but we often don't consider our parents happiness in the equation of things right? that's so true man that's it, so so true we, we often think that they have to give everything for us yeah you brought me to this to this world it's your your, your responsibility <laughs> we're we're, we're su yeah, exactly and we're super selfish with that sometimes because we're just like you're inconveniencing me like this is not an optimal situation for me but at the same time i think people need to understand that these people are human beings they need to live their lives as well they have still years and years to go of happiness or they might not have that many years if they're yeah. older and they're like i want to enjoy the rest of the years of my life like i've been with this toxic partner you know like for x amount of years to make sure yeah. that you kids grow up with like a decent education and background and upbringing and all that kind of stuff i'm done and can you really fault someone for that right no. like i i don't know like can you i, I, I don't think that's the healthiest way to, to yeah. approach it right and, and you know uh, it is often said like there's there's no school for parents for for parenting or for relationships no. i know there's a ton of books there's a ton of, uh, of knowledge out there but honestly who is going to have the exact same relationship as you're having today yeah no one no one is going to prepare you for whatever is going to come and and we also have to understand that our parents are pretty much i mean at some point they're they are young and they also make mistakes we all make make mistakes even we at do. the late later years in our in our lives uh, well, I've seen this first first hand. The, the people that are way older than me and so wise, but they are able to say, "Hey, you know what? I actually made a mistake recently, and 
but they are able to process things and understand them to the point where they are now just sharing that out to the world. I think we're all fallible as people. And I think that uh, I'm not trying to make excuses for anyone's parents back at home. Like I, I can definitely, you know, this is a funny one and I've talked to you about this before. My dad probably never should have been a dad. Um, wow. And, awesome. and, uh, and I've told other people that, that, that were, you know, products of divorce and all that kind of stuff. And usually they understand. I know that that's a very funny concept because <laughs> I wouldn't be here if that weren't the case, but uh, exactly. I really believe that that's true. Like he was just never emotionally or psychologically equipped mm. to be a, yeah. a father. Like that's what I'm trying to emphasize, right? Like he, and this is for various reasons. He had like a, a bad childhood, like his father, it, my grandpa, rest in peace, but was like a womanizing, you know, drunk oh, God, that basically, so. you know, he was an absentee parent that would come with like, come over to like the apartment in Hong Kong with like a new girl. Like, oh my God. Like the girl of the week, like every week to visit his like, oh, like, hey, it's my son. It's my other son. It's my daughter. Oh, wow. Like play with them for like an hour kind of thing. So, okay. If you lived in an environment like that, like yeah it can how would you really be brought up you know what i mean right so yeah, I get yeah no i i i think it's i'm not trying to make excuses for anyone's parents um i think the only thing that i will say if anyone's going through this kind of situation at home please understand there is no manual for how to raise yeah, a kid totally no. you can do this exercise yourself take yourself and your current state Imagine you had a kid literally tomorrow. Like tomorrow, yeah. Would you know what to do at all? <laughs> would you know how to change, you know what I mean? Like, would you know how to change a diaper? When to change it? Would you know how to bathe them? What to feed them? Like how to make, make their when? food so it's not too hot or too cold? How to pump breast milk? Like, <laughs> how to, you know, like shop for the right socks for your kid? Like, how to burp them? Like, how to you know like there's just so many things and if you have all those questions in your heads you can bet your ass that your parents had those questions as well yeah so there's no manual for this stuff just <laughs> now, everyone now else easier. goes yeah everyone just goes through it differently right so yeah. i ask you just have a little bit of compassion empathy and sympathy for your parents sometimes they're doing the best that they can hopefully they are there's some monster parents out there that probably shouldn't have been fathers or mothers absolutely but hopefully they're doing the, the best they can with what they have that's for sure um patrick we're coming up on time here uh we're actually no, a little bit over it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. our editor is gonna kill us again but uh <laughs> is, is is there is there anything that you wanted to uh kind of mention before we we wrap this up honestly just one thing uh yep. jeffrey well you know that we just launched um mm -hmm. so for the people that are watching this and that have gotten to this point uh, i just want to thank them i want to say thank yeah. you uh for for staying up until this point and be really be on the look for the next couple of episodes i if, if you want to uh, obviously uh, i will be pleased to, to join you again but i would also i would also love to hear what people want us to talk about so um and obviously if you have any feedback any suggestions just let let us know we will be so so deeply uh, happy to, to to jump into that and, uh, and see what we can improve on and, or what we can talk uh, about on the next uh, couple of episodes so yeah that's pretty much it man thank you thank you for your time i honestly have had a great time like pulling all, all, all of these uh uh uh, thoughts out of my mind again um and honestly thank you thank you just uh for everything honestly yeah oh it's my pleasure i <laughs> i know it's been a long day probably for both of us and i yeah. was tired and you were tired but uh <laughs> when we got on the actual podcast it kind of everything just flows you know yeah, like it really it's just does. a conversation which is really cool it comes from the heart it comes very organically <laughs> you know, from the head and, and what's going on there and, and our experiences. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I super enjoyed this episode. I, I hope that it's... Um, Me too. It's mutual, man. It, it's... Thank you. I <laughs> hope that it's very meaningful for a lot of people that are struggling at home with, with this kind of stuff. 
you're not alone okay yeah, don't ever feel like you are i think the one uh, the other piece of advice that i could give you guys is reach out to get help talk to people about this um i you know i took a different path where i was really ashamed and embarrassed about this at first and and it took me a long time to really open up to people i think it's important that you talk to as many people as you can uh to to kind of get that out of the way because it's only going to help you in my opinion it, it really is yeah you really have to put everything out like share your your vision or your perspective with somebody else just so you can hear out their thoughts but honestly end of this on the end of the day you really are the one that is going to decide what happens next and you have to be prepared for that if this is something that is happening in your life at the moment but know that you are not alone um, yeah. I made the mistake of thinking that, but honestly, you're not alone. And there's more than one people that probably loves you too much to see you that way. So just don't be a dick about it. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't think that you're so special because you're going through this and nobody understands. Special snowflake, yeah. Exactly, because you're not the only one. And uh, more often than not, people are able to empathize with you and to give you ideas. But then again, they cannot solve your, 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 your life. You have to be the one that does it. So I don't think this is a matter to be super depressed about, depressed about but I did depress myself. I let that, that, let that happen um, back in the day, but I'm not proud of that. I think that I could have gone into this if I had had uh, somebody like with my mindset that I have mm -hmm. today telling me these things. So. And then again, there's the invitation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out uh, through the comments yeah. or uh, through the email uh, business that the relationship guru at gmail.com, and we will be more than happy to to, to to help you out. Yeah, we're here to help, guys. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, that's the whole genesis of this channel, and uh, I know that there's people around the world that are probably experiencing some of this. So, uh, find someone that you know you trust that can help you and you can always write in um and, and we can we can help you there too so um just just in closing um you know thank you so much everyone for for listening and tuning in or watching if you're watching this on youtube um you know we do podcasts every wednesday uh so this is episode three obviously next week we'll be posting uh, episode four uh, which is super exciting. We also post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You'll find videos there as well. Um, and uh, within the subscription box, you'll you'll see that Patrick will post um, all the socials and the contacts and right. everything that you need to get a hold of us and, and follow us on our journey of, of making this channel bigger. And uh, you know, one of the things that we've always preached is you know saving the world one click at a time. You know, yeah. and I think that stands true, and that's kind of our you know mission statement, <laughs> so to yeah. speak. Um, and I think it's a really good one. So we can't really do that without you guys. Uh, we really appreciate if you could share this knowledge with someone else that might need it. Um, and you never know it. Um, there's, there's things in my life that people have said, even just like one or two sentences or something that I've read, <laughs> yeah. that's changed the course of my <laughs> yeah, life like that, profoundly. That's, that's amazing, it's just yeah. opened up the floodgates of something that I've tapped into. And I'm sure Patrick, you know there's been things for you as well is that right yeah that's true perfect awesome. okay guys uh thank you so much for tuning in again and uh yeah we'll see you next week take care have a great day ciao